In the headlines, the Labour Division says it is not in a position to force companies to comply with tribunal rulings. Prime Minister Skerit makes history as he addresses an economic forum in Russia. And pollster Alex Bruno not faced by attacks following his election poll results. I'm Andrea B with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. First up, a trade unionist has said he would prefer not to incite his members to strike as his priority is to maintain peace. General Secretary of the Dominica Trade Union, Bernard Nicholas, made the statement in the context of an ongoing situation between the employees of West Indies Aggregate and the employer where back pay is being owed to workers. Since the tribunal has ruled that workers ought to have been paid by 31st March 2017, Nicholas says to date he has not heard from the company's managing director, French national Jacques Gadacan. He knows it's the right thing to do. We agreed, you know, uh, both in law and, you know, verbally. You know, I mean, I not want to push. It's not a function of unions to uh, press employers, not in these days. It's our function to work with the employer. But sometimes employers not realize the importance of working with the union. It, when they try to play the whole game, it makes it harder. While the country's labor laws make provisions for industrial action, Nicholas says he would rather exercise patience. Dominica is a peaceful country. As far as industrial relations is concerned, we want to keep it that way. But no employer must feel that the unions are afraid to take action. We are not. But we are looking for what is in the best interest of our country and the people of our country. I'd rather see my members at work than to have them on the road. That is my view. And that's always been the view of the Dominican Trade Union. So we do everything possible in negotiating, talking, we have patience. When our patience were out, then we do what is. That's why we always win. I never will lose a case before a tribunal, and I don't expect to lose a case. I don't care how many lawyers they bring, because I work according to the law. In related news, Labour Commissioner Dr. Matthew LeBlanc says the Labour Division cannot get involved in matters of tribunal even if the employer does not comply with the tribunal's ruling. Dr. LeBlanc told Channel 5 News that employees would have to look to the court system for enforcement of the tribunal's decision if an employer fails to comply. Section 17 of Chapter 8901 explains very clearly that the matter can be filed before the court 14 days after the decision was taken or 14 days after the date upon which the decision should have been complied with is expired and the person have not complied with the decision. Now what happens when that is, is done is that it now gives the, the court full authority to exercise and uh, to ensure the compliance. So therefore the, the decision which was once a decision of the tribunal now becomes by virtue of the act, a decision of the court. And therefore, the court, the judicial system can now ensure that enforcement. For example, the, the bailiff would be able to carry out, carry out the, their functions, um, what, whether it, it is a, a warrant in default and uh, the person can be made to pay or jailed until pay, it is paid or so on. Leblanc noted that according to his division's records, very few tribunal matters are registered at the courts since generally employers comply with the decisions at the tribunal. So we have a high level of compliance and in the history there are very few occasions when the matters were actually registered at the court because our members didn't want to comply. Yes, there are issues right now that I have heard there are complaints of respondents, respondents not complying with decisions of the tribunal. but. In those cases, the trade unions and the employees' representative usually pressure in different forms and engage the, the respondent in different forms to ensure that he complies. For example, they go to the media, so for example, they, 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 they may go to the police or speak to the labor division or engage them or threaten um, to take the matter to the court and so on. So therefore, they seek other means of enforcing that compliance before they actually resort to registering it with the court. If you speak to the trade union representative, they will tell you that 
um, there is generally good compliance. So they have very few occasions where they have actually filed the matters before the court. A tribunal is set up by the Labour Minister wherever a complaint is made after negotiations have failed and he wishes to inquire into the matter. Members on a tribunal are selected from the panels comprising the Industrial Relations Board. And so at any one time a tribunal is set up, um, there would be three members, a, a chairman who is usually nominated by both the employers and the, and the trade unions jointly and a representative from the trade union which would be coming from the employees panel and a representative from the employers um, panel which would rep be representing the, the employer. The tribunal has a lot of powers under section 12 of, of, of the Industrial Relations Act chapter 8901 and the tribunal um, informs the minister on the decision and the parties and, and the decision of the tribunal are, are, are final and cannot be appealed except for a matter of technicalities of law which the court would interpret. In more top stories, Prime Minister Skerritt has become the first leader from the English-speaking Caribbean to be invited to speak at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum in Russia. The Prime Minister will address the forum as a panelist on the platform for the Eurasian Economic Union, EAEU, Latin America and the Caribbean Cooperation Gains Momentum. The St. Petersburg International Economic Forum will be convened under the theme Achieving a New Balance on the Global Stage and will run from 1st to 3rd June. Amongst the international attendees at the forum will be the Secretary General of the United Nations, the Prime Minister of India, the Chancellor of Austria, as well as many international political and business leaders. The President of the Russian Federation, His Excellency Vladimir Putin, is expected to deliver the feature address on day two of the three-day forum, which is expected to have over 4,000 attendees in all. Prime Minister Skerritt is expected to hold high-level discussions with government officials, including the Foreign Minister of the Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov. The Prime Minister is accompanied by Ambassador Steve Farrell, Secretary to the Cabinet. Honorable Reginald Austri is the acting Prime Minister. On to the entertainment scene where tourism authorities are doing more target marketing to attract a particular group of visitors to the growing Jazz and Creole Festival. CEO of the Discover Dominica Authority, Colin Piper, says there has been a focus on the British-speaking territories. What we've done is, uh, uh, and focus a little bit more on the British-speaking because although it's jazz and creole, there are a couple competing events in Guadeloupe and Martinique that um, we don't want to throw good money, you know, away when there's a competing event. So our, our marketing is more targeted, uh, really looking at some of the yachting community in uh, Martinique and, uh, and, and Guadeloupe and St. Lucia. Um, we also utilizing some radio stations in St. Lucia because, you know, uh, St. Lucia has been a great market for us in terms of our Creole events. Discover Dominica Authority is targeting a 10% increase in patrons for the main stage jazz and Creole event. We're using more social media uh, to do that and really uh, focusing on uh, word of mouth. So all the Dominicans who have been to the event and think it's a great event. We're um, also relying on them to evangelize and amplify and invite their friends to come. Over the years, I've learned to gauge the Dominican population. And we are doing the same and more in terms of advertising and just um, amplifying the message of jazz and Creole. Um, I would say a good 75% of the tickets are probably purchased at, at the gate. Um, and every year we have grown. Uh, so we'd be happy with equivalent figures from last year, but we're anticipating that there would be there would be even more people. In other news, Venezuela's ambassador to Dominica, His Excellency Hayden Pirela Sanchez, has weighed in on the ongoing protest action in his country. The recent wave of anti-government protests, which have left dozens of people dead since April, stemmed from a series of events which further heightened the tension between the government and opposition. Now we have a hard situation. 
I had to recognize that. That our president now is called to a constituent process because the is still the protesting in Venezuela. The opposition in Venezuela no stop the violence. The, I believe that with that call it uh, the President Maduro uh, do uh, did about the constituent process, I believe that it can change the situation in Venezuela. One of the key demands of the opposition is general elections to be held this year. Pirela says this will be done, however the protests still continue. The situation in Venezuela, I believe that in the future can change because we, in the next day we are going to, to do an, a new election. And the opposition is asking election. Now we, we are going to, to do election, but they don't want. They continue the protesting. But uh, I ask hopeful that our situation in Venezuela may be going to change little by little. Meantime, Health Minister Dr. Kenneth Daru says he is grateful for the continued medical assistance and the Mission Milagro from Venezuela despite the current trying times. We are all aware of the, of the internal um, issues, the domestic issues in Venezuela. And even though we've established this very tight relationship with Venezuela, we would understand in Dominica would it to have said that, that listen, we, we need to put this um, project on, on a hold. But they being the very good friends and a friend in need, as I say, the friend indeed, um, they being the very good friends that they uh, that they continue and they, they 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 are fulfilling their commitment to to, to the Dominican government and people. Um, I think this is this is commendable. Social media influencers Emil De Puta and Sherwin Thomas are encouraging its use to promote Dominica. Their comments follow a recent successful effort to promote the island on social media under a movement called Hashtag Dominica. About 25.9 million people were reached. Social media is defined as websites and applications that enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. Social media accounts are mostly free and easy to set up and information shared is far-reaching. A social media influencer is a user of social media who has established credibility and usually a larger following. Deputa uses his Facebook account to encourage discussions on national development. Well, I, I believe any form of media is something that we can use to, to promote development and to promote positiveness and, and also um, in terms of basically just educating people, right? So. I use my social media to do positive things, right? And I think if many more of us would use our social media to do these positive things and engage people in positive discussion, because I may put something on social media and I always ask people, give me your views, tell me you disagree, or whatever it is. So let us agree to disagree on Facebook, but in a, in a disciplined sort of way, not uh, oh, you're this and that. Thomas, an organizer of the popular Color Me Fet, says social media is central to promoting Dominica's events. Oh, right now, social media is a very big thing in not just Dominica, but the world. Um, everyone right now is on social media and on Facebook. Everyone wants to know what's going on. Everyone is on Facebook. So I believe that marketing through social media is a very big thing and a main thing um, for the entertainment industry in Dominica because most of the times we don't market our events properly and we don't advertise as we should. So that's one of the big things that we do because we are some, we are a few young people and we are somewhat uh, well known um, amongst our peers. So when we say that we're going to throw an event uh, on Facebook or something, we get a very positive response from our peers. Coming up, the Minister for Health on plans for a national health insurance program. Welcome back. Since the release of the results of his recent poll, Alex Bruno says he has been experiencing some interesting encounters, particularly with individuals who are at odds with his findings. His 14th to 30th April poll found that the Labour Party would retain power if a general elections were to be held today. 
Bruno did, however, point to certain constituencies where he says he found that the ruling DLP could have some challenges, even if Labour would win. Leave Marigot and Salisbury alone. I think it will take a humongous political shift in opinion and thinking to take these constituencies from the blue. Grand Bay, Vickers, Tisavan, Cottage, Portsmouth. It's going to take even a bigger seismic shift in the opinions of the Dominican populace to move them from red. And I believe it's not going to move. That's my opinion. It may, it may not, but that's what I stand by. However, I wasn't sure about Grand Four. That's why I spent more time there looking at the samples and what I put out about Grand Four and La Plain and Maho is what I found. Bruno says he was attacked for his findings that St. Joseph would be a toss-up. In fact, one of my most vicious critics was a young lady from Central, a young professional, who pretty much told me I didn't do the poll <laughs> and that I didn't poll St. Joseph. Now, if you know Senjo people, I spent a whole day in Senjo. I went back to Senjo. I made two trips in Senjo during the period. That's one of the places that I polled most significantly. But the Senjo people can tell you that I did poll them. I know I polled Senjo. I have my data. And um, what I presented about Senjo is what I got on the ground in St. Joseph. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. I have no reason to try to fix this. Why? Intellectually, it is foolish to do. And politically, it is, it, is, it is damning. Why would I try to present a different picture from what I got? I have nothing to gain in so doing. But while his findings continue to stimulate intellectual discourse in some quarters, others continue to question his motive and the legitimacy of his findings. Situations don't shake me too much, you know. But it has been a little rough, you know. I think we are so politically divided in Dominica that people like me who try to make a conscious effort to stand in the middle and present professional information get tied up in the quagmire, in the mili millage, in the labu. But I refuse to accept it. I will defend my work and maintain my integrity as much as I can. And I can, one thing I can tell the public is that as a Dominican, I will not compromise my thinking on anything that I am professionally equipped to do. So if you think that you can scare me out of commenting publicly on matters of politics, my area of competence, you can think again. In health, Dominica's two-month-old National Health Insurance Pilot Program is said to be progressing satisfactorily. The word from the country's Minister for Health, Dr. Kenneth Daru. The pilot program was launched in April and caters to mothers 35 years and under with children three years and under in the first instance. The expectation is that a wider group of people will be covered in the future under a national program. While not having figures on hand to share with the media at the time of the interview, Dr. Daru says the insurance program will allow for a more efficient way of ensuring people receive much needed medical attention. But even before the program, the pilot program was officially launched, you would have seen the testimony of a young lady with a um, child with some congenital defect who would have benefited from this program already. So, so this is exactly what this program is there for and it would eliminate a lot of the ad hoc um, way that exists now. You know, a lot of people who come to us as ministers, even members of parliament, to seek assistance, whether locally, regionally, or even sometimes further afield. And, and this, the ad hoc arrangement that currently exists, while it's helped a lot of people, okay, it always depends, of course, on availability of funds. So to have a fund put in place specifically for this purpose, I think will go a long way into, into making it a bit more workable, a lot, a lot more efficient. Daru says government is closely monitoring the program in order to learn how to develop a national plan. Of course, the, the plan is that as we go along that more, quote-unquote, more vulnerable groups will be added. We will, of course, learn from the pilot program, learn by the little errors or mistakes, whatever the case may be, do a little tweaking here. And um, until eventually each and everybody is covered because um, a, a, a multi-million dollar building and state of the art equipment and new specialist doctors falling over doctors isn't going to benefit anybody if each and every Dominican um, ranging from the top from the top notch doctors like himself to to even the rural community, the rural farmer. Okay, each and everybody should have equal access to, to healthcare. This is what this administration um, 
is, um, is aiming for. The pilot health insurance program is working with an initial amount of $5 million made available through the Citizenship by Investment program and distributed through the Dominica Social Security. Businessman Emil Deputa is calling for the establishment of a hatchery on Dominica to improve food security. He believes the system designed for artificially controlling the hatching of eggs for commercial purposes will mean improved supply of poultry. Deputa says someone skilled in veterinary medicine is better suited to manage and operate the hatchery. So I think somebody with that background should get into the hatchery. They will make money, it will be better for us. You buy chickens right now for what, like $5, $5.50 per chick. The price can go down to like two seventy five dollars per chick. So it's more money that the farmers will be making. And I can guarantee you, you will be selling quite a bit of, um, of chickens because that's one of the problems. We cannot get chickens on a, on a regular basis in terms of the baby chicks. Deputa suggested a way the hatchery business can be viable and sustainable. What I would have done is similar to what um, DBMC used to do back in the days. Um, where I would have the hatchery, right, and give the farmers or individuals the chickens. So I would give you like 50 chickens, right, and I would give you the feed for these 50 chickens, right. You build your, your chicken coop and, and that sort of thing. And then when these chickens have matured after four to six weeks, then you bring these mature chickens back to me. I pay you for the weight that you bring to me, less the chickens that I gave you and the feed that I gave you, right? And then I then give you more. And I continue to do it like that. He wants banks to provide easier access to credit for people who want to invest in such a venture. And primary school teachers from around the region were honing their skill on how to better deliver science subjects in the classroom. That was the aim of a two-day science, technology, engineering, mathematics, STEM workshop which got underway in Dominica on Wednesday. We think that if we can address the imbalance in STEM teaching in our primary schools, that should increase the number of students who want to pursue STEM-based careers in secondary schools and in tertiary institutions. Every year we find the number of students taking science subjects at university decreases. So this is our aim, to encourage teachers to teach STEM in a more creative, innovative manner, to increase the interest of the students, and to really guide them down the path of a STEM-based career. So we're all about involving STEM in our everyday activities and lives, not just in our everyday activities. Minister for Education Peter Serja says the workshop is in keeping with his ministry's drive to prepare children to adapt to the ever-changing global environment. The focus on science, technology, engineering math and mathematics STEM is indeed in line with my ministry's objective to educate and prepare all students to lead productive lives in a complex an ever-changing society. It is also quite gratifying to note that this workshop is also targeted at primary level teachers. Since to my mind, a high achievement in mathematics and the sciences will not be achieved unless the quality of teaching at the primary and secondary level is improved here in Dominica. The workshop is being conducted by the Caribbean Science Foundation and the Caribbean Academy of Sciences. As scientists and technologists, of course, it is part of our duty to assist in improving the quality of life of the people in the Caribbean region. One of our objectives, therefore, is to raise the level of scientific consciousness in this region, to increase our public understanding and appreciation of their importance on the potential of science and technology in human progress, being entrepreneurs, innovative, all these things are part and parcel of what we're looking for. To this end, therefore, we're going to start at the very bottom. We've organized training courses for our primary and our secondary school teachers. We started off with inquiry-based science education and we gradually graduated to STEM training. 
The STEM workshop was sponsored by the Ministry of Education and the Organization of American States. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Julian Morris. First stops in John's Academy beat Northeast Comprehensive by an inning and 42 runs in the first domestic insurance cricket league on Wednesday. St. John's Academy batted first, scoring 132 all out. Mikel Revere 78 not out and Savio Ansem 21. Giovanni Robinson took 3 for 40, Neo Davis 2 for 15 and Stevenson Walsh 2 for 30. In reply, NACS were all out for 40. Mikel Revere picked up 7 for 14 and Savio Ansem 3 for 12. Following on, NECS were bowled out for 51, Savio Ansem bagged 6 for 25, and Mikel Revere 4 for 25. And we can tell you that action continues in the 2017 Flow DABA League with a Division 1, followed by an intermediate match on Friday. At 7, the boys of the old school team will be looking to show LA Knights who is the dominant team in the Division 1 category. At 9, Police Sports Club will be looking to secure a win against Fast Cash Prowlers. All matches are carded for the Massac. Hard court. Meantime, there were wins for Ronald Charles Chambers, All-Stars and D-Tread Blazers on Wednesday in the first division match between PSC Falcons and Ronald Charles Chambers All-Stars. All-Stars won 73-51. All-Stars top scorers were Elijah Popo, 22 points, 3 rebounds, and Calvin Christopher, 17 points, 2 rebounds, and 2 steals. In a losing effort, Edmund Williams Sr. netted 18 points, 13 rebounds for Falcons, while Cleve Bellot added 12 points, 8 rebounds. In Game 2, Detroit Blazers dominated 85-59 in the Premier Division against Intellico Security Raiders. Top scorers for Blazers were Nathan John Jules, 25 points, 8 rebounds, 2 steals. Thomas Felix, 17 points, 6 rebounds. And Lester Langley, 16 points, 3 assists, 2 steals. For Raiders, Lenin Paul, 14 points, 5 rebounds. Teddy Rivier, 13 points, 7 rebounds. And it, Earl Matthew, 12 points. In football, the national football team to make its debut appearance at the Soliger Cup in St. Martin this weekend, beginning Friday. The Soliger Cup is organized by the St. Martin Football Association and caters for boys 15 years and under. The technical staff of the Dominica Football Association has named a 16-man squad to participate in the Invitational Tournament. The full squad reads Tyrese John Baptist, Quinton Moyes, Tyreek Joseph, Cadimel Paul, Jerome Bacard, Nixon Packett, Marcus Bridas, Frankie Bellot, Turam Toussaint, Odell Laville, Chedi Joseph, Ephron Carbon, Sachin Thomas, Jamal Augustine, Omali Rabes, and Bry Evans. The management team reads Stanton Seraphine Coach, John Joseph Manager, and Fael Lander Medics Personnel. Technical Director Jerome Badwell will also accompany the team. Athletes began training following the official launch of the Under-15 program in January. The Soliga Cup tournament forms part of the DFA's preparation for the 2017 CONCACAF Under-15 Boys Championship scheduled for Florida in August. In track and field, national sprinter Mitchell Davis to perform among top regional athletes at the Whitsuntide Games in Grenada this weekend. Davis ended four years of track training in Jamaica in June last year, but this is expected to be his toughest competition yet. He's expected to come up against some of his former training partners in this weekend's event. Some of my training partners from Jamaica will be at the competition. There will be athletes from Trinidad, um, Bahamas, um, Barbados, one of the major countries in athletics will be here. So that will be, that will serve as an advantage to me. If I want to break the national record, that's why I'll be breaking. If the weather conditions are okay. Yes, I'm looking forward to doing that, breaking national record in the 100 and also clocking on the 21 seconds in the 200. Davis will compete in the 100 and 200 meters events on Saturday and Sunday. Also at the competition, Dominica's Andre Brazil will compete in the Javelin event. The 2017 Whitsuntide Games runs from June 3 to 4. It was Grenada's premier athletic championship in the late 90s. And one local sports commentator is reiterating the call for the formation of a commentator's association here. He believes this is a need as it can only serve to lift the standard locally. You know Dominica was the venue for the last test match 
um, and it is said that the commentators who, oper who did commentaries at that test match didn't do justice to the commentary. I want to warn, sound the warning to those commentators that if you want to play your sport, play your game, do what is necessary to step up to the plate. I've been talking to myself probably and a couple of the people about 20 years now about the formation of a commentators association. And the reason for this is to be able to get the people who do commentaries on the different sport to be able to get them to a standard. We seem to want to be able to do things Vicky, Vi and Dominique and not care about what we do and how we do it. We, we cannot um, play a blind eye to sports commentary. We come Thomas is of the opinion that establishing a standard of commentary should help those involved operate on a level that is nothing less than the minimal requirement. The reason or reasons for wanting to have an association of commentators is to be able to have your commentary team on a level playing field. You don't want one commentator um, peaking sky high and the others at ground level. You want a certain level, you know, across the board so that the listener will be able to benefit from the commentary that he or she is hearing. Encourages interested parties to get on board to help bolster commentators here. Thomas has been involved in cricket commentary for over 30 years. And West Indies will be looking to return to their winning ways when they take on Afghanistan in three T20s beginning on Friday in St. Kitts. Previously, the Windies President's eleven went down to Afghanistan by 12 runs in a warm-up match on Tuesday. The other two T20s are carded for June 3 and 5. The West Indies T20 international squad to face Afghanistan in the T20 series are Carlos Brathwaite captain, Samuel Badri, Ronsford Beaton, Evan Lewis, Jason Mohammed, Sundal Narain, Kieran Pollard, Rovman Powell, Marlon Samuels, Lendl Simmons, Jerome Taylor, Chadwick Walton and Keswick Williams. And that's all the sports for now. Join us next time. We now join our friends at the Met Office for the Weather Report. Good evening. Welcome to the Weather Report and Forecast. I am Viola Pascal. Today, June 1 marks the official start of the Atlantic hurricane season. The forecast for this year is for an above normal hurricane season. We continue to advise the public to always be prepared as it only takes one system to significantly disrupt our lives. Now for our regular weather report and forecast, Across the island chain, we continue to have a band of multi-layered clouds that is being enhanced by an upper-level trough to the west of the area. The visible satellite imagery show that Dominica experienced generally cloudy conditions throughout today. The radar imagery indicated scattered light to moderate showers across the island chain. For tonight, expect partly cloudy to cloudy and breezy conditions with scattered showers. Similar conditions can be expected tomorrow with temperatures getting up to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. For the marine forecast, seas are expected to be moderate with waves peaking near 7 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution. Over the next three days, expect mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers. Some thunder showers can be expected on Saturday due to the passage of a tropical wave. Across the Caribbean, expect partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers, especially across the southern portion of the island chain. For the international cities forecast, expect clear skies in New York, thunder showers in Miami, mostly cloudy skies in London, partly cloudy skies in Caracas, and a few showers in Beijing. The sun will rise at 5.33 a.m. and set at 6.33 p.m. For further information, call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit the website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Do have a good evening. To end the news, the headlines again. The Labour Division says it is not in a position to force companies to comply with tribunal rulings. Prime Minister Skerritt makes history as he addresses an economic forum in Russia. And pollster Alex Bruno not faced by attacks following his election poll results. 
Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Andrea Lee, and to all of our viewers, thank you for watching. Join us next time.